Now, we have seen a lot of things that evaluate to true or false, or a lot of expressions, that, and a lot of computation that we can make by, com by comparing two numbers and then evaluating that to true or false, and then making decisions out of that, right? Um, the nice thing about Boolean values and about truths or false is that they also have their own form of arithmetic. So just like you can add, subtract, and multiply numbers, you can do operations with Boolean values, with truths or false, so that you can get more complex, so you can um, achieve more complex decision making by uh, operating with, this, with these values. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how to do that with what's called Boolean logical operators. And that is just a really fancy computer science way of just saying how to do arithmetic, how to do operations with things that are not numbers, but things that can only have true or false values. All right. Uh, and we will see how that is going to be super, super useful for making a bit more of complex decision making when we're doing conditional statements or other kinds of structures in computer programming. So for example, let's start with this example where I have two Boolean values, A and B. One of them is going to be true and one of them is going to be false, right? And then if I just plain print the value of A to the console, the, the window shows up on my other screen, of course, because I always forget. Uh, but if I just plain print the value of A to the console, what I get is the value of true. So that's perfectly fine. But what if I wanted to operate a little bit with this value? So what if what I wanted to do was to operate, to print to the console the opposite of the value of A, right? So the first logical operator that I want to show you is the exclamation mark. And the exclamation mark is a symbol that I can use to flip the sign of a Boolean value. So for example, if I say, can you write line not A? So if I print that, then what's going to happen is that um, I'm going to print the opposite value of what is stored in there. The, ex the exclamation mark is the, it's called the not operator symbol because what it does is it negates a Boolean value that is assigned to. So, and similarly, if I printed B and then if I printed not B, then I would get false and then I would get not false, which is true. All right, even lexically, from a language perspective, it makes sense. Something that is not true is going to be false, right? So this is the not operator. Okay. Now, there is another operator, uh, which is called the and operator, right? Which you can use to compare two Boolean values and then reduce that comparison to another true or false value. So for example, um, if I tell you, if I ask you, is this line of code long? You would say false. And if I ask you, is this line of code long? You may respond true. But if I ask you, is this line of code long? And is this line of code long? Because at least one of them is not long, then um, the result of that comparison is false, right? So similarly, what I can say is I can take two values, A and B, and compare them with the AND operator, which is written with two double ampersands, okay? And two double ampersands, what they do is it takes true and false, it takes two values, and then it computes the end of those two. So the only time two values with an end operator yield a true result is if both of those are true. If at least one of those is false or both of them are false, then uh, the result is going to be always false. So in a way, it's the most restrictive operation that you can do. And similarly, there is another one that is called the OR operator which as you may, ex and, and it's represented with two vertical pipes like this ones. And what it does is it compares things with the or logic. So is, if some, one thing is true or false, then what is the result of that? Is this line of code 
short, long? Or is this line of code long? Because at least one of them is true, then the result of that operation is also going to be true. What that means is that true or false equals true, as you can see here. Okay? So, two things that are true, true or true equals true. True or false also equals true. For, false or false equals always false. Okay? And actually, I think it would be probably easier to write it like this, right? This true and false, you know, and then perhaps this is easier to type. Yeah, probably this is, this is probably easier to understand. Yes. You see? So this is how you use uh, com Boolean comparison operators or Boolean operators to make comparisons or to create expressions with values that are true or false. Let me show you an example of how we could use this technique inside, for example, of an if statement to make even smarter decisions or more like fine-grained decisions. Let me write that and show you that in a second. Okay, so I have prepared this example and what I've done is I have created um, three numbers. So I have created like a value uh, of the type integer and then I have defined two boundaries, the minimum and the maximum. Right? And what I want to do is I want to print to the console, like in previous examples, I want to print how this value relates to the range, the numerical domain that I have formed between minimum and maximum. So I want to print messages like, for example, is 2 within 0 and 5, is outside of 0 and 5, or is exactly at the boundary of between 0 and 5, right? So what I'm going to do that, because, because now I need to compare the value of 2 to two other values, to 0 and 5, then that's why I'm going to need this more complex um, complex um, way of, um, of comparing, of aggregating these comparisons together, okay? And the way I'm going to do that is by the following. So for example, first of all, which is probably going to be the most typical case, I'm going to see if the value of 2 is outside of the range between 0 and 5. And what are the conditions that need to to need to, what are the conditions that lead me to knowing if 2 is outside 0 and 5? Well, first of all, I know that if the value of 2 is greater than the maximum, then I know that that's going to be outside of the interval. So if value is greater than max, then um, I'm, I'm already going to be printing this message. Okay? okay, value is outside the minimum maximum interval. And this already works okay and of course the window is somewhere else so i'm not um so i am not here and what i could do before i knew logical operators is that i could say well i'm going to also print whether if value is less than minimum you know i'm going to print the exact same message okay but this is not very optimal i want to be able to perhaps like on one go say well instead of redundantly copy the same, just create one expression here that checks both things. So what I can do is I can take this, I can remove all of that here and say, well, if value is greater than the maximum or two double pipes, if value is smaller than the minimum value, then it just so happens that value is outside of the range. So for example, now if I do minus three, you can see that I get the printout minus three is outside the zero comma five interval. Does that make sense? All right. What are other conditions that can happen? Well, I can be inside of the interval, right? So otherwise, else if, if value is greater than minimum. Okay. So that can be one thing. Then and or value is smaller than maximum, then here print this is inside. However, this is not the correct operator because what can happen? What if 
value was, for example, 13. 13 is greater than the minimum, but it's not, but it's smaller, it's not smaller than the maximum. So it would give me an, a, a, a wrong error. It would give me a, a <laughs> okay, I'm messing this up. It will give me a bad error. So for the value to be within the interval, we have two conditions must apply together. The conditions must be that the value has to be greater than the minimum, but at the same time, so and value has to be smaller than the maximum. It, it's only when those two conditions apply that we can know for sure that we are inside of the range between minimum and maximum. So right now, if I say, well, this is a value of two, you can see that two is inside of the zero comma five interval. Okay. So that's great. But of course, there is yet another corner case that we can run into. Like what if value is actually equal to one of the values at the interval? Okay, so right now we don't get any message. Okay, so there, well, there's two things that we could do. You could assume you could assume well, um, for me inside could mean that we are also at the boundaries. So if value is equal to one of the boundaries, then I'm just going to consider that, that that's inside. So I could just replace this where with if value uh, is, is greater than or equal. Well, actually, that doesn't work. Now that I'm saying this out loud, that doesn't work because it cannot be greater than equal. Well, it can be greater than equal or smaller and equal. Yeah, sorry, that does work. Actually, oh, I'm really messing this one up. <laughs> Yeah, so if value is greater or equal than minimum or and value is smaller and greater than max, then it is inside. So that's one thing. But if I wanted to be even a bit more specific, what I could do is I could add a third clause where I specify that value is actually at the boundary. So what does that look like? I could just say, well, else if value equals equals minimum or if value equals equals maximum okay then print here to the console value is on the boundary of the oh and sorry i have a typo here equals equals okay and now if i run this code you can see that five is on the boundary of the zero five interval Okay, so this is an example that can show you how uh, truths and falses and conditional expressions can be chained together and can be operated with, with the logical operators not, the logical operator or, so two double pipes, or the logical operator um, and, which is represented with two double ampersands. Again, this is extremely, extremely common, is extremely, extremely useful, and you're going to see this, and you're going to use this all through your life uh, in computer programming, okay? So um, I recommend like a very nice ampersand tattoo on your arm because it's a really nice, beautiful looking symbol, but it will also remind you of Boolean operators. <laughs> see you on the next video.